everyone. This is the next episode on exploring the metaverse. I'm uh, Hugo Swart. I lead our VR and AR business uh, together with the broader metaverse uh, initiative here at Qualcomm. And um, today we have a very exciting conversation uh, with uh, Vishal from Lenovo. Hi, Vishal. Thanks uh, for joining our next uh, episode of Exploring the Metaverse. Thank you, Hugo. It's a pleasure to be here. Long uh, time no see. So uh, yeah. great to, to be sharing with our audience here a bit more about you, about the Qualcomm and the Lenovo partnership um, in the Metaverse. You know, let's start with um, how do you define Metaverse and, you know, what's the vision uh, you and Lenovo have uh, for it? This is definitely one of the, uh, the very exciting chapters in the life of, uh, of anybody who's been in the AR, VR business. The Metaverse is a, a 3D spatially immersive uh, environment where a large number of people uh, can come in uh, to, to play games, uh, to do their work to socialize. I see the metaverse as the next iteration of the internet. It's being defined as Web 3.0. Uh, that's going to be largely driven by two technologies. One is, uh, you know, low latency 5G networks that are now ubiquitous across the world. Uh, and second, it is going to be driven because of uh, AR, VR devices now becoming uh, more head-worn and being able to give you this full spatial 3D uh, immersive experience. And uh, maybe let's uh, dive a bit into Lenovo. Many see Lenovo as a PC infrastructure kind of um, um, uh, company. How does Lenovo then plan to offer products and uh, go after the metaverse uh, opportunity? One thing that Lenovo is known for is its innovation, right? It's one of the most innovative companies. Uh, though we are number one in, in the laptop space, we have what is known a pocket uh, to cloud kind of offering, right? Whether it's smartphones in your pocket that are being powered by uh, largely Snapdragon devices, whether it's laptops, which are now also using Windows and Snapdragon and have uh, 5G co connectivity to our cloud platform, uh, that powers one of the some of the largest data centers in the world. When we look at the metaverse, uh, I believe it's a tide that lifts all boats across Lenovo. When it comes to the metaverse, you're going to require a lot of compute power. That's where, if you look at our workstations, our ThinkPads, our heavy-duty uh, graphic processor and laptops, that's a big part of the discussions we are having right now with content creators, uh, as well as uh, people who consume the content. Uh, to make these laptops more efficient for Web 3.0 and the metaverse. A lot of this content, this 3D content, this immersive content will have to uh, sit on the edge, right? It's going to have to be some sort of a mobile edge uh, that, that serves this in a distributed architecture, and it will have to be delivered over some sort of a 5G network. So we feel that uh, with our data center business, with our smart edge business, uh, and collaboration with uh, companies such as you uh, who are providing 5G networks and the 5G technology, it'll be a big part of uh, our solution offering as well. Uh, the ultimate layer is the XR devices layer, which is how you will experience 3D content, right? And no matter what form the metaverse takes, the ticket or the road, the highway to the metaverse is going to be through some sort of a AR, VR device. That's the optimal way to enjoy the metaverse. I'm not saying it's going to be all 3D, but uh, more and more of these 2D metaverse uh, experiences will shift to 3D. So that's where we're investing heavily in our Think Reality platform along with Qualcomm uh, to create a complete end-to-end -end solution for our customers. No, I mean, I, I love the name. Think Reality is just, uh, you nailed it on the head. You know, I think for the Snapdragon Insider audience, maybe let's focus a little bit more on the, on the device side and the Think Reality uh, product line. So, VR or AR? What's, uh, you know, what's your favorite? And uh, what are you investing with higher priority on? We are one of the few companies in the world that has a complete VR as well as AR offering. We are one of the few companies that has made an investment in both these areas. We, uh, we strongly believe that uh, at least for the next few years, there's going to be very specific and different use cases in VR as well as AR. Uh, let me give you a very specific example, right? So one of the most exciting areas that will really help ramp this technology is uh, the collaboration and the holographic collaboration use case yeah. uh, that we are developing and we're seeing in the market. Whether you are in a VR situation where you're you're interacting with multiple people or you're uh, walking through an immersive mall environment, or whether you're using uh, an AR product for uh, collaboration where you've got five or six people 
uh, from different continents looking at the same consumer package good or a hard stent and being able to design it on the fly uh, or even some a salesperson making a sales pitch uh, to a doctor or to a to their customers in a more 3D environment is extremely powerful not only for the enterprise but even um, i can see you know friends you know yes, getting together absolutely. and playing let's say a, a virtual board game you know yeah. everyone in a different corner of the world but being represented Absolutely. at a photorealistic avatar, I mean, I think it fits well to the use case you just mentioned. That's sort of the promise of the metaverse, being able to shop together, being able to you know, have that experience together. And another example of, that I've seen is in fitness, where you can have five, six, 20, 30 people work out together, uh, you see their avatars, they motivate you. Yeah. Uh, some of those uh, applications are uh, pretty compelling. We actually made a conscious uh, choice to make the think reality form factor as small as possible and as light as possible so our, our, our customers can wear them for extended periods of time. Somewhere between two to three hours, being able to wear them very comfortably uh, when you're performing a particular operation. And the reason why we could do that, we made a conscious decision not to put any major compute uh, chip set in there or any major uh, battery in there. Luckily, we had access to your XR1 chipset on the glasses as well, which is very efficient uh, and provides the XR capabilities we need. But a lot of the compute as well as the, the 5G connectivity and battery all comes from a, uh, a tethered a model of 5G device. So we were able to offload a lot of that weight uh, and do the distribution, the heavy duty distribution uh, on a model of device. We're able to stay on the latest Snapdragon family uh, of the devices, as well as the latest technology. So we started with the model of G100, which had 5G coverage and mid-band coverage, but uh, starting with Edge, we are now able to provide millimeter wave support as well. I'm proud to say we are at the leading edge of the connectivity as well as compute power uh, on these devices. Now, going forward, we are very excited to work with you to remove the wire, uh, so to say, to make it wireless, but still tethered to some sort of a uh, laptop, uh, cloud, or uh, compute device, uh, but being able to do that over Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi wi 7, and even a millimeter wave directly through the cloud. When you, you plug the A3, the Think Reality A3 to a PC, um, the, um, I think one of the, the the main use case is being able to have multiple virtual monitors in front of you. You just plug your, your glass into the PC and then is as if you had multiple displays uh, in front of you. What are your customers saying about uh, this use case? It's known as our PC AR use case, and it's basically an abstraction of your PC uh, and turning it into multiple monitors, as you, as you said, right? Going forward, we were working with, with partners like TechWiz that are even able to provide really millions of polygons that you can actually see in 3D in full sixed off mode uh, on your laptop itself where they have multiple monitors and people have to go in just to kind of monitor those monitors and get that information. But now with COVID and with a lot of these refineries uh, and uh, offshore platforms being, uh, you know, completely workerless, uh, they can now have this five to seven monitor experience sitting in their house or sitting on a plane uh, or sitting in a coffee shop. And, and with AI, you can pipe in the right kind of data, the right IoT information, uh, and the right uh, warning messages in front of their eyes. Now you're building, bringing like a, a $10 million knock into a person's uh, you know, uh, home office. Um, now, the yeah. second topic you know, that I addressed with Brian was um, developers, that will create the content, will create the applications you know, on top of um, um, AR glasses like um, you know, the, the A3. And then Brian explained um, our, our um, developer um, initiative, right, the Snapdragon uh, Spaces. We're very happy to have the, the Motorola um, phone, plus, Edge, Edge Plus phone, plus the uh, Think Reality A3 as the developer kit. What do you see as um, uh, are the benefits, you know, uh, Snapdragon Spaces? And, um, and, you know, anything that you can share around, uh, you know, experiences, developers that are already engaging with you through it? One of the pillars, uh, strategic pillars that we have here at Think Reality is supporting and developing an open ecosystem of partners, right? So we want to create the right XR platform, uh, but we do not want to do everything for everybody, right? We, we can compete. So we are big believers uh, in an open architecture and an open ecosystem uh, and I think the Snapdragon Spaces has really helped uh, create that open ecosystem. Uh, and a testament to what you guys have done, I believe it was uh, just within weeks of releasing your SDK, 
we were at AWE, we were able to see some of the, co the coolest gaming concepts, enterprise concepts that people were, were already creating using spaces. Uh, the second uh, aspect is just the overall volume of folks who have talked about it and are adopting it. One of my favorite applications is, uh, as you probably know, is what, uh, what, what we've done with you and our modal counterparts uh, at the Padre Stadium here, here in San Diego, where we've actually created a complete baseball, immersive baseball experience for up to four people, multiplayer, uh, in, in the Hall of Fame. So uh, that's an amazing uh, feat that just within a month of launching Spaces, we yeah. actually have a game that people want to play. And I, I see families play, play that game, people competing. Uh, it's pretty phenomenal. What needs to happen, maybe even challenges, you know, for, you know, AR glasses to become, you know, as uh, small or almost as small, small to the ones that we are wearing now. And, um, and yeah, what, I, how do you see Lenovo, you know, driving that? From an overall architecture perspective, I believe we're on board with you completely. The split architecture, uh, this eventual even rendering, cloud rendering that needs to happen is going to be a big part of how we offload the compute and the power needed uh, to make these glasses smaller and smaller. To me, what's also very exciting is sort of creating a end-to-end -end ecosystem for our enterprise customers so that they can help uh, get into the metaverse. So what we've tried to do at Think Reality is kind of create a complete turnkey end-to-end -end solution. Uh, it's a complete stack that evolves with the customer needs and adjusts to the customer needs because we're still in the infancy of the metaverse. Thanks, uh, Vishal. You know, great to have um, you and Lenovo as a partner. Absolutely. It's a pleasure being on and uh, really enjoy the Snapdragon community myself. I'm a member and I'm always looking forward to uh, the content uh, and some of the, the solutions you guys provide to that. Sounds great. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching the Exploring the Metaverse show. If you want to watch another video or learn more about XR, click here. If you want to learn more about Snapdragon Spaces, click here.